Hi, I'm Andrea from Hair Stories in Babylon, New York. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do a lob haircut or a long bob on Julianne, our model today. First to start, you wanna have your center part all the way to the back of the neck. Make sure it's nice and clean. I like to use Prefix, which is our leave-in conditioner, which is just gonna help detangle the hair and keep your sections really nice and clean. You're gonna bring each parting horizontal to the back at the desired length, and you're gonna keep your fingers squared off to create a bit of a shorter to longer look in the front. And remember, just keep using your prefix and make sure everything is nice and hydrated through, just so your partings are nice and clean. With each horizontal section that you're bringing down, after you've cut the desired length in each section, you wanna pick up your straight razor or your feathered razor and do a penciling technique. This penciling technique is going to remove weight and also create the texture you want. So I like to do about three or four in between each section. You can do more or less. After you've done all your horizontal sections and you feel complete with your haircut, I like to do a little detailing after. So depending on how thick the hair is compared to how thin, sometimes I like to go in with a thinning shear to just remove a bit more bulk and create some invisible layers. I like to take it up in vertical partings around the crown and just use a super light and, you know, one at a time, you don't want to take too much bulk out. You always want to see how it's laying. And at this point, I also like to put a, maybe like a little bit of a summary in it, which is our salt spray. See how the texture is forming and see how it's taking with the hair. So our, for our finishing, I'm just going to do some natural texture with our salt spray summary. And I'm just going to use a twisting technique, which is away from the hair. You can part it almost like pink tails. And you just want to keep twisting and applying product with having your blow dryer on hot and just keep it moving. You don't want to keep the blow dryer in one spot. You want to keep twisting and moving the heat back and forth and adding product for as much as you want. Um, this is also just to prepare for our next part, which is going to be a hair painting with Dana. So we just want to dry into natural state and not use a brush so that she can see where her hair naturally falls. And that's going to give her the best result for her hair painting with Dana. Hi, this is Dana from Hair Stories in Babylon Village. Just got Julianne in my chair from Andrea. She just had a nice haircut done, and we're gonna start with some color. To start Julianne's hair painting, I'm just sectioning a few things off to make it a little neater for myself. She has a lot of hair. So starting underneath with a few highlights, uh, with each section kind of putting a little bit of lightener towards the roots and gradually concentrating a little bit more towards the ends to give it a more bright appearance. So with the hair painting, we want to start from the bottom of the hair to the top because everything is open, there are no foils. So we'll start by taking an underneath section and work our way up to the top of the head. In the first section, I put a little bit of lightener on my brush to make sure that uh, I have more control over where I put the liner. As time goes on and I get more towards the end of the strand, I'll add a little bit more liner, increase the amount I use to give a bolder look. So after we apply the highlights, we'll allow our model to process for around 20 to 25 minutes or until the liner is dry. Because all the um, highlights are open, you're able to take down all the highlights at once. So. Once it's done processing, everything can get rinsed. So the next phase is to rinse out the lightener, and after we rinse out the lightener, we're able to start toning the hair. I'm Jess, I'm from Hair Stories in Babylon. Julianne just got her painting done. I'm gonna apply her glaze for her now. So with Julianne's glaze, we're gonna section out the back from the front, start in the back, and stack it into almost a waterfall. And underneath, you're going to have more darkness with lightness more falling on top of it. When we go to the front, we're going to section out the hairline and keep it nice and short in the front, moving it up towards the top of her head and nice and combing it down piece by piece so it flows really nice. Now that we're done with our glazing portion and the color is done, we went into share with styling. She started with damp hair with some prefix, a detangling spray, we layered with intro, which is a little bit thicker and helps defrizz. And then we layered with some summary for some texture and some volume. So you want to take your crown section, roll back with a round brush, 
set it aside or pin it up to get out of your way. And then for the underneath, you're just gonna use your hands in the blow dryer and just dry it naturally. After that part, you're gonna take a big curling iron and just round it back away from the face. You're only gonna round the roots to the mid shaft and leave your ends out. It's gonna give it a bit of a beachier texture. After you do that with the underneath, you're gonna take your top part down, you're gonna blend in with your fingers, get it into the place you want, and then just take your fingers like a rake and pull all the way through and add a little bit of extra summary if you'd like for a bit more texture. 